This next question comes from Muckle. I need some honest feedback on Evan Mobley making the all defensive team. In my extremely biased opinion, he should be a lock and the only debate should be over defensive player of the year. He's played almost 1000 more minutes than triple J that's 28 games when using Mobley's minutes per game and has only committed a handful more fouls. He's elite at defending on the perimeter and down low. He's a beast with almost no national attention. I'm afraid he's going to get overlooked and this will turn out like the rookie of the year race last year. Yes. I'm still bitter about that. I, like I said before, I have not gone through my all defense teams. Evan Mobley will certainly be on the, uh, will certainly be on the, sh the, sh it's maybe it's a long list for me. I don't even know how you're going to narrow down, um, forwards front line guys when you're looking at, uh, making picks for all defense this year. That just feels like it's going to be absolute hellfire to do. Uh, so I, to say that he's a lock, I, like I would really need to go through it, but just like kind of consider some of the, if he's going to be eligible in the same tier as Jane McDaniels, for instance, what does Herb Jones qualify as? I know that he gets announced as a shooting guard for the Pelicans, but he could log most of his time all over the place. Uh, you have Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to be in there. And so there's only like going to a limited number of spots. There's only two all defense teams. To fill up, excuse me, uh, Jared Jackson Jr., Bam Adebayo are going to be in like looped into that as well. I so I am hesitant to call him a lock. I do find it interesting though, and there is look when you watch it, there is more to me of a ubiquity to how Jared Jackson Jr. is defending, sort of this like controlled chaos that can also be ungoverned chaos when you look at the amount of foul trouble he gets in. So I'm not saying that Evan Mobley shouldn't be in the defensive player of the year conversation, I am a little bit surprised that he's not getting more buzz where it's sort of been determined that the two names or maybe even three names, because I still think Bam Adebayo has been really good, but looking at Bam, Evan Mobley, and then even Draymond Green, I know the Warriors defense hasn't been great, but Green has by and large been great. I'm just surprised that those names haven't been mentioned as much as we've seen. I've seen some Giannis. There's definitely Brooke Lopez. He might even be the betting favorite as of right now. And then Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, the minutes play discrepancy, I don't know how to reconcile that. Jared Jackson Jr. would be like one of the third lowest minutes per game winners of defensive player of the year the NBA has ever seen if he does get the the award. Uh, I do feel like, yes, Evan, it's sort of flown under the radar too. Like the Cavs are one of the two teams that rank in the top seven of both offense and defense. And the other teams, the Boston Celtics, who are kind of just fading a little bit at the moment. Mobley specifically, not all of the catch-all metrics love him. And so I do think that sort of hurts. You look at defensive estimated plus minus. Uh, doesn't seem to love him, but he ranks second in LeBron defensive point saved. Uh, Nicholas Coxton ranks number one in that category. These metrics are all flawed. Nicole Jokic is in like the top 10 of LeBron defensive point saved. Uh, but like just looking at everything else that Mobley does, he's fourth in total shots contested at the rim. He is in the top 10 of blocks, even though he's not considered the traditional shot blocker. Uh, he contests 44.1% of the other team shots at the rim when he's on the floor, that's actually a higher number than what Jaron Jackson Jr. is con contesting. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way these teams defend. Jaron Jackson Jr. spent a lot of time on the floor with uh, a Brandon Clark or a Steven Adams. Not anymore. Obviously, both those guys are, are injured. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s actual rim protection numbers are better, though. He's more elite in that area. He's saving more points per 75 possessions at the rim. Uh, but... Like if we go like it, yes, Triple J, it does feel like there's more of a ubiquity to him where he can fly around more places just on one given possession, where it feels like Mobley can do the same, but is also keying on, uh, keying in on what would be tough singular assignments. Like he's responsible for so much, but when Jared Allen is on the floor, his role changes a little bit. At the same time, he takes on harder matchups overall. Um, the Cavs defense is still in the 87th percentile when he's playing without Allen. It's still in the 76th percentile when you play without Allen and have both your guards on the court in Garland and Mitchell. That's absolutely huge. He's gotten better as sort of just this stand-up rim protector. Uh, I could probably... I, I Mobley is the better on-ball defender. I would trust Jaron Jackson Jr. in the post more. He's definitely... I don't know if I mentioned this already. He's definitely going to be better in the passing lanes. I do think it comes down to what you value. And when you look at just straight up shot deterrence. I do feel like because he's a little bit stronger and also because of how many of his, his, I don't even want to say his blocks, but his contests are coming as not even the primary line of defense. Uh, there's more of a fear that Jaron Jackson jr. Instills, 
but you watch what Evan Mobley does on the defensive end. And I think that you can say his overall role, it covers a larger scope might be the best way to frame that for me. I do wonder are voters or media members or just fans of the game sort of diminishing his contributions because he plays with, yeah, you look at the perimeter defense and it could be spotty. Although I think Karis LeVert's done a pretty good job of fighting this year when he's playing the three, Uh, but you have Jared Allen next to you, who is someone who might have sort of his own all defense case. If he was going to have enough minutes played uh, relative to some of the other candidates, does that detract from him at all? Where yeah. Okay. Jared Jackson Jr. has Dylan Brooks. Uh, but he has, you know, even Steven Adams, he's very valuable from a rebounding perspective and being a big body. He's not some excellent defender. Uh, and also Jaron Jackson Jr., the Grizzlies defense, w- do whatever split you want. It's going to be elite, more elite than Cleveland's when Jaron Jackson Jr. is on the floor with Adams, without Adams, with Brooks, without Brooks, at power forward, at center. It doesn't doesn't really seem to fucking matter when you go through the through the lineup splits. And I think it's I think the bigger difference to me would just be the statistical dominance that Jaron Jackson Jr. has showed as a rim protector and as someone who's going to just get more of those. Uh, I, I'm not, I want to make this clear. I don't think this is a product of purely counting stats, but as someone who's third in blocks per game while being what is he even in the top 150 of minutes played this season, he's 156 in minutes played right now. That's kind of incredible. And Evan Mobley, yes, he's played substantially more, but isn't going to have that same erasure. Evan Mobley is sixth in total minutes played this season, by the way. But I do think, look, being on the court for that long, I, I think that has to matter as well. And so uh, if you told me that, uh, if you told me that Evan Mobley was the defensive player of the year, that's who you're voting for. I can't push back against it. And so to, what I hope is answer Muckle's question. Yes. I think he's underrated in the discussion. If I had to guess whether he's a lock for all defense, I don't know. I've I've, just based off my own thoughts, I will call him a lock because I think he'll make uh, my all defense team. I think he made my all defense team last year. So yes, he's a lock for all defense. I think the case for defensive player of the year is arguable, but I will agree that it feels weird that Evan Mobley isn't mentioned more routinely as a candidate. And I can't pin the exact reason why, because I don't think the gap between what he's doing and Jaron Jackson Jr. is doing is that large. If it exists at all, the only thing I can really come up with is does so much of what Mobley did, especially earlier on this season, get overshadowed by the fact that, Oh, it's him and Jared Allen together. And it just feels like a success by committee instance. And Jaron Jackson Jr. Came back mid season after being out with an injury and just totally not reinvented the Grizzlies defense, but they weren't forcing as many turnovers without him. And the defensive statistics were all over the place. They weren't even a great defensive team to start the year. He comes back and they're all of a sudden just the best defensive player, uh, best defensive team in the league. I think that I don't want to call it a narrative, but that turn of events, that development has helped his case. And I also, finally, I'll say when it comes to all defense, I definitely think you need to weigh um, every factor, but, could it be the reverse of uh, MVP where it feels like we're so caught up in durability as one of the elements for the MVP award, but when it's defensive player of the year, if you're going for the vote of Jaron Jackson jr, it's not necessarily a vote for availability or staying on the court as much as was this just the most outstanding defensive player, almost bar none with the minutes. And that's not to say that uh, Jaron Jackson jr has played a good, it'll be, should be over 1800 minutes by the end of the season. Is that just going to be, enough. And so it feels like almost we would be viewing defensive player of the year in the vein of all NBA, where I think people are a little bit more flexible with the sample sizes and more inclined to say, well, yeah, Kevin Durant, he can't finish top five on the MVP ballot, but he could certainly make second team all NBA with the minutes that he played. I'm not saying he will, but I think that there will be that type of logic. And so are we ascribing a similar sentiment to the defensive player of the year conversation? That being said, I absolutely think Evan Mobley is capable of winning the award. If I had to guess on my defensive player of the year ballot, uh, because of how much people favor just the, the straight up rim protection, when you're talking about the volume of the shots contested, and in addition to the rim deterrence, uh, which I do think that bigs like Brooke Lopez, maybe even Giannis, and of course, Jaron Jackson Jr. are going to be better, more frequent deterrence too, because of the positions and roles they play than an Evan Mobley. That goes into it. I think Mobley has a strong case, though, to be in the top three of the the ballot that people are going to fill out. I don't think he'll crack the top three of most ballots. I agree with you there, Muckle. Uh, but I do, I do, I also agree that I think he belongs in the conversation. Has not been given enough credence in that, even if he is not your your ultimate pick. 